Hello everyone, this is Lee and welcome to my channel. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a perfect day to be working on fixing problems. And today's issue was fixing this unsightly gap that existed at the bottom of this property. So if you have an outdoor space, if you have a home that has this unsightly gap, then this is the video for you because in this video, we'll be covering the most commonly used materials available to cover up this unsightly gap as well as the pros and cons of using those materials. In this instance, this rental property, I wanted to find the most inexpensive stuff out there that I could use to cover this gap, something that's inexpensive and looks great. So if you wanna learn how I did this and how you could do something similar, stay with me to learn some more. All right, so this is a cabin style home that I've been working on to get it restored so that I could have it rented. And one of the last things that I saw that needed attention was this unsightly gap that was here at the bottom of this property, it was hideous. I had horizontal siding installed, but I needed something to break that pattern. So I wanted to install these vertical lines to break away from the pattern of the wall. And this is what I came up with. All right, so there are a lot of different materials out there that you can use. Just because I decided to use wood doesn't mean you need to use it as well. Now, I had a portion of the house, the back of the house that had block. I could have added stucco cement to that, added a nice pattern to it, and that would have worked just fine. Um, but I don't have cement or block at the front end of the house. So I had to find something else to use because I wanted to use something that's uniform throughout. So stucco's out of there. Now stucco has a lot of benefits. It lasts a long, lasts forever. <laughs> and you could add your own pattern, your own style to it. So it works great. It's somewhat inexpensive if you already have block around it. If you could do it yourself, by all means go at it. Now vinyl is probably the most popular product out there for elevated structures. Um, some of the pros, it's easy to install, it's durable, it lasts a long time, easy to clean, you could install it yourself. Um, there's a ton of different options within the plastic family. You have veneer like stone. Uh, there's just a lot of different options out there that you may want to consider vinyl. The reason I didn't want to add vinyl is because it's still too expensive for this rental property. I wanted to find the least expensive option out there um, and I wanted to create something that wasn't already prefabricated I wanted to build something myself my own pattern my own design I have a ton of options with wood I could stain it I could paint it I could you know create whatever pattern I want I know I said that already <laughs> now some of the reasons I didn't want to use vinyl is because if I'm using a weed eater and I hit it it tends to damage permanently and I'd have to replace that entire section. I don't like that. Um, that's why it's easier for me to repair or replace a board as opposed to repairing and replacing vinyl. This is common, you could find this anywhere, any local home store. I also didn't like the look of vinyl uh, because I don't like the look of a elevated mobile home. It cheapens the look of the property and I don't want this property to look cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I decided to go with wood. Now, another option that is also out there is metal. I've used metal in the past. These corrugated metal panels were great. They're durable, they last a long time, but also the look of metal is not something that I wanted to go for. Um, it looks sort of industrial and I didn't want this cabin to look like that. So those are the reasons that I wanted to use wood. Now. Just to discuss a little bit more about the wood that I decided to choose, um, there's this pressure treated one by four um, wood that you could also purchase, but it's still more expensive than the option that I decided to go with, which is these wooden pickets. Uh, these wooden pickets are a lot less expensive than this one by four. I think this one by four is about five, four or five dollars and the same size is about two dollars so it's less than half the price of regular wood it's also pressure treated uh the picket that i'll be using for this installation and well those are the reasons why i wanted to consider this now some of the cons to using wood obviously if you're using wood you want to make sure that your home is treated 
you want to make sure that when you install these pickets, it's elevated off the ground at least two inches or so. You don't want to give those insects the opportunity to climb up into your house. So it's important to have your house treated um, whether you use wood or not. <laughs> For the purpose of this video, we'll be working on installing the pickets on this side of the property. So here we go. All right, so I'm gonna start making some cuts. I've got my miter on the ground because I'm too lazy to get a table. <laughs> this is called handyman on the floor backyard woodworking. Wow, that was a mouthful, great. So I've got my pickets. I'm gonna start cutting the top of the picket so I can make it straight. And I'm gonna start installing it on the wall. So here we go. All right, so I've cut my two pickets. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just see what it's gonna look like. So I could see that I have some spacing where I could add the vertical pickets here. Now, if I wanna create more of a spacing, I could cut this in half and I could cut this in half as well. And that actually saves you some money. <laughs> but I wanna keep that pattern uniform throughout the house. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the spacing, which is okay by me. And it saves time. All right, so the height of this wall is going to be about 10 inches so i'm going to start cutting pickets that are 10 inches high just enough to cover this entire section here all right so i measured 10 inches i'm simply going to measure 10 inches from the top i've got two boards stacked on top of each other and i've got this lanyard that i got from one of the dollar stores has been working out great for me and i've got a pencil at the very end short of course because you don't want this to hurt your neck in case you bring your neck down but this pencil strapped to your shirt is probably the best thing. I'll make a separate video on all the tools that I use, so stay tuned for that. All right, I made my way back and I'm gonna start installing this one picket right here. So I've got the vertical picket behind the front facing one and I'm gonna start adding some staples yes I'm using a staple gun uh, this is a cordless DeWalt 18 gauge stapler I've got one inch staples here that I'm gonna use to hold those two pieces together I like staples instead of just regular finish nails because the staple has basically two nails going into the wood that'll hold it in place and it'll keep it from moving back and forth. That's the reason why I like using it. So let's go ahead and start stapling. All right, so I wanted to show you where I added the staples. I added a staple here and I added a staple here. And that's all pretty much I need. That's just to keep it from moving back and forth like that. So I know the top picket is gonna go right about there. I'm gonna put two staples there. One and two. And now that I have that set up, I can continue uh, adding the rest of the vertical pickets. All right, so before I start adding pickets, I wanted to show you what I use as a spacer. So I've got this vertical picket. I'm gonna put this behind these two boards here and I'm gonna put my spacer, which is a two by four, and I'm gonna place it there. And that's how I know how much spacing to use when I'm installing these pickets. So I wanted to talk about the spacing that I decided to use with this property. I wanted to allow some spacing in between to allow the house to breathe. Um, so I decided to use a two by four and I stuck it right in between the two panels. And this was the spacing that I used throughout. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I had a space between the ground and the skirt that I was adding. I didn't want this wood touching the ground because it tends to rot and you don't want that to happen you don't want to start picking up insects from the ground either um, I decided to have an exposed hinge I have another property that I did the same thing uh, that I didn't attach hinges and it's hard to explain especially if somebody goes to the property to make any repairs it's hard to explain to them where the opening is and how to access that crawl space so hinges to me were a must and now I'm gonna use a square to make sure that everything is square. A few moments later. 
All right, so I finished building out this section. Now I'm gonna go ahead and insert this section where I want it. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is add some screws to this board to hold it in place. All right, so here is the finished section. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this one. We're gonna also work on this together. Well, just a portion where I'll be drilling some pickets into the concrete. I just wanna show you how I do that. Okay. So the best method I've found to install these pickets against a concrete block or stucco home is to actually install it vertically first. So I'm gonna install these vertical pickets um, here and spaced out every two to four feet until I've covered the entire wall. And then I'm gonna add my horizontal picket that goes across. So let's go ahead and do this together. All right, to begin, first you need a concrete bit and anchor set. So I've got my concrete bit here and I've got my anchor set here. I'm gonna use either the green or the red anchor, plastic anchors um, after I pre-drill the hole. So to do that, in order to pre-drill the hole, I need a hammer drill. You'll, you can tell it's a hammer drill because it has a hammer on it, great. And I also have a water bottle. So whenever I make a hole into the concrete, I wanna make sure that this tip doesn't get too hot because it'll melt with the friction of the metal on the concrete. So let me show you how I do this. So first I'm gonna mark it off. I'm going to set it right about there. All right, so I know that my hole is gonna go right there. So now I'm gonna add some water. Okay, next I'm gonna put my anchor in. And it's okay if it doesn't go all the way in because I'm gonna cut that either way. Multi-tools are great. Okay, we've got that off. Now I'm gonna insert a screw to hold that in place. So a screw long enough so that it goes through the board and actually holds on to the anchor against the wall. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so all done with this screw. Now I gotta work on the one at the bottom and I gotta add a few more to cover up this wall. And then I'm gonna add the horizontal board right on top of it to hold everything together. All right, so I just finished installing the pickets, the boards on the right. I'm finished with the left. So this is what it looks like. So as you can see, there's some cement showing in the back. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this black. Let me go ahead and spray that, give you an idea of what I'm trying to do. Okay, so that's black. This is so far what the rest of the property looks like. I've just painted every single gap so that it's not visible because what was behind that picket was red. It was a red block that was showing through and I wanted to cover that. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint, not just the pickets, um, getting ready to paint the whole house. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what the pickets look like. All right, so I've just finished installing the pickets. I got so much more work I gotta do to this house. I gotta replace the columns in the back. I've got to replace the roof. I got to work on the inside, which I really haven't done. I've got a lot of projects that I work on. I also work on customers' properties as well. So if you are interested in learning and seeing more stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also give this video a thumbs up. So keep on innovating, keep on inventing. Until next time, this is Lee signing out.